happening right now. Water worries inside the classroom. Test results show alarming levels of lead, prompting schools to take action. Nobody wants lead in water. Plus, rethinking emergency response. We can have the officers leave so that we could focus on a mental health intervention and not a law enforcement one. How a new emphasis on mental health is changing the way first responders react. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. The jobs of our first responders are changing as calls during a mental health crisis become more common. In just the last couple of weeks, Billings has seen two with two very different outcomes. These during incidents where the Billings Fire Department Crisis Response Unit jumps into action, aiming for a peaceful solution. Our Alina Howder has more on their role and when they're called. This crisis response unit under the Billings Fire Department has responded to 871 calls since its inception back in October. The team behind the unit is meant to serve mental health calls, but there are some exceptions. We have like our CAD system right here which has dispatch. The inside of this crisis unit vehicle may look like a cop car. <coughs> but these first responders behind the wheel I love this job. have a much different role. We are an EMT by the city paired with the clinician by Rimrock to help bring a medical component to uh, also a, a mental health kind of assessment. With a master's in social work and a license from the state, Ariel DeHart is a crisis response clinician. With her EMT partner, she spends 12 hours a day, four days a week, responding to calls like welfare checks or maybe someone experiencing a manic episode. Once I can get them to a closer to a baseline, then we could start thinking about what exactly happened here. Can we help you see a provider? Can we take you to the women's shelter? A huge time saver for law enforcement agencies like Billings Police. Co-responding with the crisis response units um, to these type of calls, like making sure the scene is safe and like everything is good. And then if law enforcement is not needed and they can handle what is going on, our guys get to leave. The unit was called into action this past Sunday to help respond to this call involving a suicidal man who was making threats but hung back until the scene was safe. For mental health calls that have an additional level of just being unknown or there is maybe weapon involvement or threats of weapon involvement, we'll kind of just hang out and stage safely. The CRU is just one small part of Yellowstone County's heightened focus on behavioral health. It's inclusive of the crisis now model. So much a focus that instead of calling 911, those in crisis are now encouraged to call 988, a line dedicated solely to mental health services. Crew, the crisis response unit, can then respond if you need the next level of care. A new approach to care in the community. We just pull all these extra things in. Spend more time with them where the firefighters, police, it's not in their realm to be able to sit. And in Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Getting rid of lead in our schools, that's a top priority for dozens of districts across our state after 350 Montana schools showed elevated levels in drinking water. Tonight, our Charlie Kleps takes a look inside Rose Park Elementary, which is now set to embark on an $84,000 project to make school drinking water safer. The numbers are alarming. 74% of Montana schools that tested for lead had at least one fixture that exceeded limits. Rose Park Elementary is one of them, but will receive some costly upgrades this summer to fight the problem. It is a very important thing uh, to have clean drinking water. There's no debating the importance of clean water. Nobody wants lead in water. But a study conducted two years ago inside Montana schools proved clean water is no longer something you can take for granted. This is the, the drinking fountain right here that failed. This faucet at Rose Park Elementary is one of hundreds in schools across the state now wrapped up and out of service. Our first goal was to make sure every school had, had some clean drinking water in the school where students could fill their water bottles and whatnot. Schools statewide have now begun the process of replacing pipes and eliminating lead, something easier said than done. It's frustrating, and, and uh, uh, but we'll get through it. Several districts, including Billings, have multiple schools with lead problems. Most schools had at least one fixture over our action level of five parts per billion. Lead is pretty prevalent. Greg Montgomery says the DEQ has collected samples from nearly 480 of the 590 schools across the state, with majority needing something fixed. 
Here in Yellowstone County, 49 of the 55 samples the DEQ has monitored have had at least one faucet with lead problems. Those can cost a few hundred dollars to replace, um, up into, you know, could be tens of thousands if it's found in the plumbing. Fortunately, an EPA grant is funding many of the repairs, coupled with $3.7 million in funding from the state legislature. But even that hasn't been enough. Last year, we replaced fixtures up until um, we had used up our allocation. Those funding issues, along with balancing a typical school schedule, are why many faucets are still faulty. And they can't just spend the next uh, three or four months changing fixtures without addressing anything else that's needed at the schools. But the good news is a plan is in place. Rose Park was approved for an $80,000 project, which will completely replace the main line. And Ryder says the others around the district will slowly get replaced. Realistically, uh, I would be very happy if we can get them all completed by the end of the summer 2025. A problem the district is working on one day at a time. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. A portion of the Yellowstone River in Paradise Valley will close tomorrow while crews work to replace a bridge destroyed in the 2022 floods. The Carbella Bridge crosses the river about halfway between Livingston and Yellowstone National Park on Tom Minor Road. The river closure will extend from the Yankee Jim River access downstream to the Carbella Recreation Site. The closure applies to all river activities, but it's expected to only last about less than a week. On this early Tuesday evening, more active weather from Montana as well as northern Wyoming. We have some showers, we have some isolated thunderstorms too. We have a few that are approaching the Malta area, mainly missing Malta to the south. Say that five times fast, getting closer to Glasgow. We've already had some thunderstorms rumbling through Jordan. We also have more further to the south. They are already moving over Hysham and also approaching Forsyth right now. So drive carefully right along the I-94 corridor. Further south, not quite as active around Billings. Had a trace of rain earlier. We still have some showers and thunderstorms just to the south of Hardin. So a part of a mostly cloudy sky right now. Live view from our shopping and bank camera. Had a high today, still below average at 63 degrees, but bigger changes are coming. Our seven day forecast in a few minutes. A small town Montana student wins a very big contest. Jeremiah Sifuentes of Spring Creek School in Decker is named the winner of the 2024 Law Enforcement Appreciation Contest. The contest, which began in March, was a way for elementary students to show their appreciation for Montana's law enforcement. Today, Attorney General Austin Knutson and Montana Highway Patrol Colonel Kurt Sager celebrated with Jeremiah and his class inside the community's one-room schoolhouse. I did a great job. This poster was fantastic. Uh, and we're always looking for a good submission that really kind of embodies what law enforcement does in the state and, and our, our thankful thankfulness towards them. Um, and his, his poster was spot on. It was just showing like appreciation and instead of like doing things that usually cops like to do, it was more showing like um, what they're doing. That's why I drove like a wrote like a crime scene there. And if you are wondering, Decker is located near the Tongue River Reservoir just north of the Montana-Wyoming state line. Jeremiah says that he made his poster because without law enforcement, the state wouldn't be a safe place. The poster will be displayed in Montana's Department of Justice offices across Montana, made available to law enforcement offices statewide. And from one small town to another, a group of Bridger students become the winners of a $2,000 national grant to reinvest in their community's senior citizen center. As our Kelsey Boggs tells us, it couldn't have happened without the generosity and support of their beloved teacher, one who's changed a lot of lives for the better in her small town. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. On Tuesday in Bridger at the Senior Center, a special surprise, all thanks to some local hardworking students and their teacher. It's just such a joy to reflect on how much we've done over the years. Food drives, treat sales, fun runs. These are just a few of the projects Bridger High School FCCLA students have completed this year. It allows us to help out our community and really better the community by accomplishing this. It's just a really great program that we wanted to be a part of. Students passionate about giving back to their community. Influenced by their teacher, Vicki Kaufman. <laughs> 
and we just love her so much and we're gonna miss her but it'll be nice for her to have a break from us kids <laughs> she cares deeply about the students and it just shows with her dedication for what she does with the students. After more than 30 years of teaching, Kaufman's last day will be this Friday. We're to honor you with a plaque for your 32 years of service. Oh, wow. Appreciate it. Before her send off, a chance to come together one final time and give back. To send Miss Kaufman off like this. It's really a big thing this year, and we're happy to do it. On Tuesday at the Bridger Senior Center, Kaufman and her class stopped by with a gift. We stand before you, honored to present a symbol of our collective success. A generous check. Donating $4,000 from Project Profits in a recently awarded grant. Wow. It really made us happy to see all their faces and the smiles and all the hugs. It was really nice. Lead for Change, a national free leadership program, selected the Bridger FCCLA group as grant winners for their impact on the community. There's lots of winners in the eastern part of the country and we're one of the fewer countries in the western part so hopefully we can bring it more over here to, to spread the love. The group decided to give it back to the senior center to help pay for meals and whatever else it might need. The perfect way to send off their teacher who changed her community and students for the better. Make them keep working. That's what I told them they had to do. I mean, it's a hard position to fill with her shoes. So we're hoping the next person that comes in will continue all the good things. In Bridger, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. Tonight, a follow-up on a story we reported surrounding Montana's Medicaid redetermination. More than 130,000 Montanans lost health coverage during the process, but there could be some help in finding some insurance options. Cover Montana launched a new Get Covered Again campaign aimed at informing people about what's next. It includes reapplying for Medicaid if they believe they're still eligible or finding options on the state's insurance marketplace. The campaign is partnering with the state to connect with people who have lost coverage. Whether that's in a food bank, whether somebody is receiving some kind of case management service, kind of everywhere and anywhere folks are already accessing services and already have a trusted relationship so that they can right, have a conversation in that moment and at, the, at that organization to say, hey, you might have lost coverage over the last year, but did you know you have coverage options available and it's not too late to enroll? There is more information about Cover Montana online where people can get help finding local assistance with coverage applications. Still to come on the MTN 530 News on Q2, a call to action. Advocates looking to stop mining near the Smith River before it starts. We'll have the details next. And later in sports, a Columbus athlete preparing to put in overtime in college. We'll explain in just a bit.